Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, on whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who by the resurrection of thy Son has given unto us a new birth into eternal life, lift our hearts, we beseech thee, to our Savior, who sitteth at thy right hand, that when he shall come again, we who have been reborn in baptism may be clothed in a glorious immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them, and they worked together. By trade, they were tent makers. Every Sabbath, he would argue in the synagogues and would try to convince Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with proclaiming the word, testifying to the Jews that the Messiah was Jesus. When they opposed and reviled him in protest, he shook the dust from his clothes and said to them, your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Then he left the synagogue and went to the house of a man named Titus Eustus, a worshiper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the official of the synagogue, became a believer in the Lord together with all his household. And many of the Corinthians who heard Paul became believers and were baptized. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 98, the first four verses, which are found beginning on page 727 of the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 98, verses one through four, which we'll recite together in unison. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm has he won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. The 
Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will have pain, but your pain will turn into joy. When a woman in labor is in labor, she has pain because her hour has come. But when her child is born, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy of having brought a human being into the world. So you have pain now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. On that day you will ask nothing of me. The word, the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to return to the book of Acts. The reading from the Gospel continues and has been split up into two pieces. So we'll get, maybe we'll get back to that tomorrow. Um, but I want to get back to the book of Acts, which we've, been, which we've left for a little while, because we've had saints' days and we've had feast days, the ascension, and so we've, been, we've skipped over parts of Acts, Acts. So let me try to catch you up to see where we are. We've been, we left off in about midway through chapter 16, and we're now at the beginning of chapter 18. Remember that Paul uh, had gone to Macedonia, and uh, he'd been joined then, but he had been joined by Timothy and Silas, and they had set off on their way. Um, when they were in Macedonia, they were flogged uh, and then put in prison. Paul and Silas, at least. Timothy, we don't know where Timothy was. Paul and Silas were put in prison. Uh, their feet were in stocks and they were in prison and there's an earthquake and all of the chains of all the prisoners come off. This is the episode in which the jailer uh, is about to take his own life because he knows that the previous jailer who had um, Paul in prison and uh, there was a prison break was um, was was executed uh, and so the prisoner is about to take his own life but Paul sees him and shouts, tells him to stop we're all here we're right here don't worry we haven't gone then Paul um, and Silas convert and baptize the jailer and all his family uh, then uh, after that in Macedonia then Paul and Silas go to Thessalonica, and in Thessalonica is when uh, St. Luke tells us, gives us a wonderful turn of phrase that um, the people of Thessalonica, the Jews of Thessalonica, accuse Paul of, of turning the whole world upside down with his teaching, which is a moment that I've always loved. I find it's a ter terrific thing to think of the gospel turning the world upside down because, well, it's a terrific thing if you think the world needs to be turned upside down. And I often think the world needs to be turned upside down. So uh, that's in Thessalonica. Then they travel to, uh, to Beroea. And then on to Athens, which uh, Paul finds full of idols. And he preaches in Athens. And, um, uh, but doesn't stay there long. Now, Paul has arrived in Corinth. He was separated from Silas and Timothy earlier. He's arrived in Corinth. Um, Silas and Timothy were supposed to meet him in Athens, but they didn't. Um, apparently, um, and they're going to meet up with him here. Um, but first, uh, Paul makes, uh, Paul, Paul finds Aquila, and uh, he takes up work with Aquila, and because they are in the same, they're in the same trade, which are tent makers, Saul, uh, Silas and Timothy will arrive, and Paul begins to teach in the synagogues, but the Jews don't want to hear what he has to say, so he shakes the dust off him and he goes next door to the house of Crispus, who it says is, the, Acts, the book of Acts says um, that Crispus is a believer in God, a worshiper of God, but I guess not a Jew. So it's sort of a strange, uh, I haven't done much work on this part of the text. Um, I have to see what Luke is getting at there. It's um, a bit of a strange moment. What And this passage really will continue tomorrow when we'll hear, spoiler alert, it's not much of a spoiler I tell you, when we hear that Paul will stay in Corinth now for about a year and a half. And um, this is where Paul's going to begin to build up a church, spending a year, a year and a half there doing it. So 
But what is it? I mean, up until now, Paul has been uh, all over the place, right? I mean, he seems to, the whole point of, the, of this, this narrative seems to be to tell us about how Paul is on the move, going from here to there, uh, preaching in the synagogues, uh, doing a work of wonder here or there, maybe, um, break, getting, being thrown in prison, breaking out of prison, having the Holy Spirit intervene for him. Um, he's, but he's on the move. But now, at last, he is uh, able to stay put in one place. I know I'm jumping ahead to tomorrow, but um, maybe it'll take more than one day's work of thinking about this to uh, let, it, let the importance of it settle in. Who knows? Here Paul is in Corinth, and he's about to settle in. And I want to point out two important features of what uh, Paul is able to appreciate while he's in Corinth. I've already mentioned them, but it seems to me that they're important. One is that Paul has work here. I don't mean work building up the church. He's got that everywhere. He has work as a tent maker, which suggests all kinds of possibilities. One, that he can sort of pay his own way for a little while. His future in Corinth looks sustainable to him because he's got work. And that's an important thing for him. Up until now, how has Paul been surviving? On the kindness of strangers? From, from his savings? Collecting unemployment? Don't know. But the fact is that he has work. And um, he has work because he was able to find it with this man Aquila who was a tent maker and because Paul had a skill that he could use. God forbid I should ever find myself in Corinth looking for a job. Uh, but Paul had a skill that he could use. So that's one thing. He has work which makes, uh, which seems to make his staying in Corinth's, Corinth um, sustainable. The other thing I think that, that's notable and that is important is that Saul, Silas and Timothy have arrived. They've been separated. Paul's been on his own since Macedonia. It's not that he's been ineffective. It's not that he hasn't been doing his work, but he has been on his own. And Silas and Timothy are there. His friends and his colleagues are there with him. And this too, I think, maybe makes it look as though um, his time in Corinth might be sustainable. Maybe having friends there without work wasn't sustainable, and having work without friends wasn't sustainable either. But having his work with Aquila and his friends there makes things look sustainable. Add to that Crispus, whose house is next door to the synagogue, so you know there's sheep stealing going on here, um, that Paul must surely think it's a good idea that he can preach close to the synagogue. Psst, psst, he says people are making their way to or from the synagogue. Come here. Let me tell you something about um, my understanding of what God is doing, what I have seen and heard from God about what he's doing. So Paul has these, these important um, features that work, all making his work sustainable. The fact that he has work to support himself, the fact that his friends are there, and the fact that he's been given a place in the house of Crispus next door to the synagogue, couldn't be better, uh, in order to carry out his work and ministry. So there's good news here, I think, isn't there? There's good news for Paul. It helps us to think about the things that we need in order to, get a, to make our own life and our own ministry sustainable. And the fact of the matter is that we're living in a time where ministry in the church doesn't always look sustainable, and right now our own working lives don't look sustainable for so many people. Um, so maybe we need to be paying attention to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, or some version of those, for the sustainability of the life of the church, or one another. Maybe we need to make sure that, uh, above all, wherever we can help people to find work, we help them find work. Wherever we can help people to find friends, we find friends. And whenever we can be in proximity 
to them so that we can proclaim the good news to them, we should be in proximity so that we can proclaim good news. Those seem to be the three factors that are working in Paul's favor to keep him in Corinth for a year and a half. We'll see how it goes when we tune in again tomorrow. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, and Kyle, Nora, Stephen, Nicholas, and Gordon, my priest brothers and sisters, who worship and work in this place and parish, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald our President, the members of the Congress and the courts, Tom our Governor and Jim our Mayor, and all those in positions of authority and public trust that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who are sick with the coronavirus, who are suffering in any way because of it, and those who are doctors and nurses and medical professionals and essential workers in all kinds of industries and occupations, and all those who are at risk because they're providing for or caring for the rest of us during this time of pandemic, and all those who are unemployed at this time and without work to make their own lives sustainable and to worry about the sustainability of their futures, their careers, worry about their families, their livelihoods, and their well-being. And especially remembering at this time, those in need in this parish community, Chris, George, Sue, Tom, Kent John, George, John, Tim, Homer, Mary Jane, Judith, Mark, Julio, Marlene, Brian, Mark, Todd, Olivia, Carol, Patty, Richard, Nathan, Gary, Charles, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially all those who have died from the coronavirus in the past day, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, of blessed Mark, the Evangelist, and with all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us now humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these darkest doings, 
the remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. God is gone up with a shout and with a merry noise to the sound of the trumpet. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at my hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift that up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord and Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, after his glorious resurrection, manifestly appeared to his disciples, and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, there we might also be, and reign with him in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy 
didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching you to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins, to offer unto thee any sacrifice. Yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much to gather up the promises under thy table, but thou art the same, O Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but I speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. The body. God, Christ, the bread of Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are thy members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful. And are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, 
so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of an everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed the world. Save us and help us, we humbly beseech thee, O Lord. Let us pray. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee unto thee for succor. Deliver us, we beseech thee, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. To prosper the means made use of for their cure. And grant that, perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leadeth to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 